everybody, Jill here. Welcome to my channel. I always appreciate when you decide to click on that thumbnail and spend a little time with me. We're going to be doing just a very casual makeup tutorial today. I don't even know quite what I'm going to be doing. We're going to make it up as we go along. It's going to be a full face and I am going to give you a sneak peek so you can see if it's a look that you would like to stick around for. about you guys but I am really looking forward to fall and I am itching actually to do my first fall full face look not gonna do it necessarily this time I do have like a whole outfit picked out my nails I am so excited but I'm actually going to do the unheard and wait until fall to release my first fall look not quite there yet well you already got a sneak peek to see see how it all turned out. I'm not quite there yet, so I'm hoping that this definitely turned out okay. Now, I usually, I mean, every day, you guys, I grab my L'Oreal Infallible 24-Hour Pro Glow Foundation. Foundation. In number 202 is the color that works for me, but I'm not gonna do it this time. I'm, I wanna change it up a little bit. So I'm gonna actually reach for the Makeup Forever HD Skin foundation today I recall liking this okay it must have not have blew my mind but let's use it today and see if it all comes back to me okay so yeah it's been a while since I have used this we'll see I don't even remember if it was a good match or not to be honest well, I can say a little goes a long way that's for sure so makeup forever was the very first, as far as I know, the very first company or brand, I should say, that came out with a foundation that is specifically geared toward those that are being filmed on camera or getting pictures taken. It could be a wedding, it could be whatever. It's supposed to film well and or, you know, photo op well. So when it first came out, every YouTuber in the world was using this, this foundation. It does, it's not super heavy in coverage or anything like that. It is very skin-like. The, the finish is pretty. It's just, I don't know, it's a little heavy feeling to me. I don't like to feel my foundation much. All right, should I use something different? Because this is my grab. I mean, this has been my concealer for a long time. Ever since I tried it, it is the L'Oreal Idol Concealer, and I love it. Should I try something? I think I will. Since we're doing something different, let's change that up too. So let me take a gander as to what I have here, and I will get back to you. I went ahead and grabbed this. This is the L'Oreal True Match. So let's see. Let's see about this one here. Yeah. So I'm just going to put, I remember, oh, gosh, dang it. And then you can't put it back in, guys. That was so much, so much. So I remember now that this, this is so much, this reminded me a lot of the Bare Minerals Serum Concealer, which I don't even know if they make anymore. It's just very serum-like. So you might enjoy this one a lot. It'd be kind of a, a nice dupe for that Bare mineral Serum Concealer that I used to absolutely adore. And I still like it, it's just I think they they just don't make it anymore. So be careful because I just wasted a ton because it came out too fast and a little of this goes a long way, which is generally the fact with these types of concealers. But this, this is very nice. Am I gonna get the kind of coverage like, you know, in here where I'm, I have quite dark hollows? No, but it still feels lovely under the eye. It does have enough pigment where I'm getting a brightening effect. And sometimes, you know, that's all we need, but I'm gonna probably utilize something else 
because I got to take care of those hollows. Okay, so I think really because I might forget and then I'm going to be mad at myself. We're going to move right into dealing with that dark circle situation. I'm going to reach for the Rare Beauty Eyelid Primer. And again, it has this really great sort of light coverage, yet it does a great job at color correcting. And of course, being an eyelid primer, it also primes the eyelids. And they're hard to find when it comes to being a nice, suitable one for aging eye tissue. Sometimes they can really make that creepiness worse. Sometimes they can almost really dry out that tissue. So it is a little bit of a challenge. I just stopped looking for the longest time and then I stumbled across this one and I love it. I think it's great. I think it's even kind of hydrating. So the trick is, is to really just pat it in. Don't move it around a lot. Just kind of pat it in. Let's go back in time when this palette was so, so popular and to this day, it is still one of my favorites to the point where I had to get the big giant one that just came out sort of several months back, but it's this one here. This is the Tartlet in Bloom palette. If you like warm looks, I think this is a must have. These are lovely, very nice eyeshadows. I have had this this is embarrassing because you know you shouldn't keep these forever but i want to say i have had this since 2018 probably maybe 17. so i'm going to load up my ring finger here and i'm going to put it right on my mobile lid to the corner but i'm not going to put it in here but just to the corner of that mobile lid and I'm not going to worry, you know, too much really about out here, even though I just now put it there, but that's okay. I just want really the most of it to be at the center and a little bit inward of this really pretty champagne gold color. It's gorgeous. So I'm going to grab a Morphe brush. You'll see the number up here. And I'm going to go into that, this here. I'm going to tap it off a couple times and I'm going to shoot for right in the middle, pretty much right in the middle. And that has changed for me. I used to start down a little lower, but I really want the bulk of this pigment to be right around here rather than over here. And that's mostly because I want more of an almond shaped eye for this, but we are going to jazz up the outer third. Definitely, but I just tend to sort of deposit it in the beginning right in here. I am going to bring it right up under the brow here. This is a beautiful color, depending I guess on your skin tone, to do a little bit of contouring with. It's a, it's a matte color, at least it's matte enough to, to do this. Now I didn't do that when I had a bunch of pigment on my brush. Pretty much was fairly empty. But I am going to go in and get some more. And again, I am going to just kind of get it the depth that I'm thinking I want. Let's move over to this eye. So we're going to start, you know, right about here. I'm pressing it. I'm not moving it around a lot. I'm really, it looks like maybe I am, but I'm really just kind of working the pigment off the brush onto my skin there. Okay. So as you can see, what I'm going for here is more of sort of an eyelid, a bare eyelid which uh, is going to kind of give me that doe-eyed look. So we're not going to put heavy, darker pigments really on the mobile lid. We have that gorgeous champagne color there. Here, this is kind of my cheater blending brush. I do a lot of my blending kind of after I put the pigment where I want it and then I blend. 
I find it works better when you have a lot of crepiness, you know, to do it that way. I do a lot of packing and pressing, you know, and then I get it around, but I'm still kind of packing and pressing because when you have crepey tissue, you get a lot of skipping if you put it on there and start moving it around. So that can actually be really hard to correct, believe it or not, um, to get a nice smooth all over finish of whatever that pigment is. So that is something that I've had to tweak over the years, really, as well. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice, very soft application there, and that's what we want. We want all the edges to be soft and blurred out everywhere. Now I like to go into a sort of a packing brush that's a bit angled. And for this particular look and this kind of technique, I find they work great. So here's the one that I reached for. This is a BK Beauty brush. I want to say it's 205. See how it's slightly angled? So I'm going to load that up. We're going to go into this one here. This is like a true chocolate brown. When we put this color on, the only thing I want you to be careful of really is that you knock it off because this is a very deep, rich color. It's probably going to be the richest color of your entire sort of look we have going here. So be careful of that. But the other thing is when you first put this on, your eye, make sure that you're not going too low because we kind of want to eliminate sort of this any pigment or even your eyebrows growing down in this direction. So we want to leave that alone. So be careful where you first put this. So we're going to aim for about the outer third of the eyelid. So start there. That's always safe. So we're going to just kind of put it right in there. And I like using that downward angle right at the lash line. And then as those fibers kind of get a little longer, they can feather up upwards. And then we're just gonna pack, we're gonna pack it. Really want a lot of most of this pigment really to be right here. We're going at a slight angle, but we're not going out. And just now that we have very, very little pigment on here, we can just sort of start sort of brushing it down and blending it out. Let's do the other eye. Tap it off. We're gonna start right about outer third. Slight angle. We're not doing this. We're not bringing it out here. Okay, so we have we have this going on. I'm gonna grab my little blending brush now and we are gonna soften this. The major places that we soften is gonna be the top line here. So really soften that. You can soften this line between the pretty champagne color and that darker color. That's fine too. But you really, you know, make sure you, you get over here, but you don't have to worry too much about this outer line. We've kind of established that on purpose. So, so I'm going to go in with another BK Beauty, and this is 704. This is great. Great for this. I am going to go under the lash line with first with this color here. I want this to be really smoky. Think of this as more contouring than putting a line of color. So we're really just sort of going to contour right now. I'll try to do it this way. It's always a conundrum. So I also want you to be careful not to drag this out too much this way like I just did because I can't see super good. Okay. So I want to bring this down probably lower than what you feel comfortable with <laughs> and uh, I really want to soften it. Now I'm going to wipe it off on my terry cloth towel down here and I'm going to go in to that chocolate brown one. You know, I should have cleaned off my palette before I recorded. I did not. Okay, I'm going to put this very close underneath the lash line, very, very close. And I'm only going to go about the first third 
well, halfway. I lied. I'm gonna go in again to that color. I, I want to kind of blend them together, intensify the outer third here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get that blender. We're just playing. We're just playing today. You know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm going to warm this up. I think, you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I am. I think I'm going to, I am going to go in to this color here. with kind of that transition brush and I'm going to put that really high but not directly underneath like I'm leaving some space I'm just I don't know I want a little more warmth right here just a little more okay okay now I'm going to go in with a little guy and I'm going to go back into that really sparkly champagne color that we put on our eyelid there. And I bet you know what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to tuck it right here, right where my, my arch starts and right about there. I'm not bringing it down too far at all because I don't want it to look puffy. Okay, there is a color in here that I have to use because it is gorgeous and it's hard for me not to add it every time I use this palette. And it's the very far right corner, which is right here. I'm going to have to do it. And I'm going to go in with a packing brush Something. to see what the number is. Just a little flat guy here. And I'm going to go into that color. I want a little more dimension, I think, right here. So. I'm gonna pat it in. I'm only gonna do the mobile lid. I'm not gonna bring it up. All right. We're done now, we're done. Where's my blender? Okay, everything's gonna come together, I promise. First though, we're gonna curl. <laughs> we're gonna curl the lashes. We love. So I'm gonna go right into my favorite mascara right now, and it is the Lancome Idol Mascara. They only had this size available when I went to get it. I was hoping they had a full size one and it was all sold out. So I'm going to go now and do my eyelashes and I will meet you back here when I'm done. All right, I'm just going to complete the whole eye look. So we're going to go right to the eyebrows and I'm going to go ahead and get my eyebrows on. I'll make sure to put up what it is that I'm using while I'm using it. sound repetitive sometimes but I don't know the last time really that I mentioned this so I'm just going to mention it in this one just in case it's been a while whenever you start shaping the tail end of your brow 
I recommend not ever going in, and again, this is not a hard and fast rule. This is just sort of my suggestion. Whether you're going in with a pencil or powder, don't ever take it and just draw a line. You know, so like if you're going in with a pencil here and you're doing this, then don't just do this. Same with your powder. You're going in like this, and then, I mean, when I am exaggerating my arch, because I no longer have any brow hairs there, um, you know, I'll sort of do this and bring it above the actual line of my tail end of the brow. But I will then go and soften it out by doing little side sweeps in the direction that the little hairs actually grow. Same with if you're doing a pencil. Bring that pencil and establish little hairs this way. Don't just leave it this way. Soften that out by doing that. Same really even with the tinted brow gel. You know, bring it in sideways to really kind of coat the hair that you may have there, little brow hairs. If you don't have anything, you still want to make sure that you don't just end it with just a line. This is the star of the show as far as I'm concerned. Just love this. This is the Patrick Ta. I think it's like lamination brow or something. I just love the tiniest little applicator there. It is so precise. It's crazy. And I love it. But you have to, I have to dip it in. It's like it does set up. You have to like this kind of finish though because it is like a gel. It is like a lamination sort of gel. So while it definitely will set wherever you decide to put that hair, it's so precise, you have to still like the finish. And, and that'll be just something you'll have to decide if you do. I do. I love it. I can really manipulate hair by hair and it will stay there all day. It's so great. But when it sets, it's done. Okay, let's move on. I'm going to do some contouring because I'm in the mood to do that. So I'm going to do that. And yes, I do contour a lot for just for my day to day looks. And that usually is what will sculpt my look and my face. And then I'll go kind of light with my blush and kind of light with my lips. That's just a look that I've been into lately. I'm going to go right back into this palette because many times if you're fair like me, you really have to shoot for a color that is warm to ash. And I tend to get luckier when I look at eyeshadows that are matte for my contour. And I happen to see one that I think is gonna work really well. It's not too ashy and it's not too warm. And it is this one, that one that we utilized. The trick is, is finding something that I can dip in there without getting into the, any of the other colors. It's got a little point to it. I think it's gonna allow me to, oh yeah, this is working great, 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 great. I'm going to knock it off a couple times on the back of my hand, just the littlest bit. And I'm going to go ahead and this is a great color for me anyway. So for contouring, I'm going to load it up. It's always good to be safe and go in light. For contouring, you don't want any light to reflect off of it. So nothing satin, nothing. It has to be matte. So let's, let's dip right into the next step, which is going to be a little bronzing. It's still summer, and I want to look sun-kissed and glowy. <laughs> and, and that's challenging when you're fair. So I'm going to go in. This has been my reach. I've been reaching for this all summer long, and it's my Catrice Sun Lover sort of baked bronzer. And I've been really liking it. I'm going to go ahead and load this up. I am going to, to tap it a couple times here on my towel. I'm going to go right into the hairline with this and then bring it down 
and this will just highly depend on what kind of forehead you have. I have a taller forehead, so I like to warm it up just sort of, you know, on the outskirts. You remember what we used to contour? I'm just going to kind of wipe that off. And I'm going to go into the bronzer and kind of load it up. But I am going to tap it off a little too. And I'm just going to take that sort of right over the bridge of my nose here. Right in here. I'm going to use this, I think, and just kind of soften that. It just looks like you got a little tiny bit of color or sunburn or, <laughs> you know, whatever, right along the nose because that's what happens if you don't wear sunscreen. And I do have sunscreen on, but still, I kind of like that look. Actually, you know what? <laughs> I think we're going to just stick to using this as a blush. So let's go in to this color here. Right from the same, you know, no reason why you can't. So we're going to do that. We're going to use that and we'll see. We'll see if I like that. Play with your palettes like this, guys. You'd be surprised. You could do a full look just with your eyeshadow palette. I mean, honestly, blush is almost like just a, dare I say, a marketing ploy. So let's contour the, the lips here. Now this is not lining the lips. I'm not overlining the lips. Just eliminate that word line out of it because we're doing just the opposite. We're unlining the lips, if you will. And I have thin lips. I want to give the illusion that my lower lip is a little fuller than it is. So we are going to contour. We're gonna manipulate the light to fall where we want it to, to then you know, allow our actual lip to just seem much fuller. And as we age, especially if you have thinner lips, you notice it more, and that is that your tissue starts dropping into the corner of your mouth and you start losing your lip line. We're gonna contour that so it kind of looks like it's bumping it up a little bit. So contouring works with everything. If you draw, if you're an artist, it's all about contouring, and then everything else comes after that. I mean, contouring is what gives you that 3D effect. It sculpts everything. So shadow, light, that's all we're doing with makeup is we're manipulating the light. We're going to have it bounce off where we want it and fall in and disappear where we want it. So I'm going to create and do you notice that it's not, I don't even care that I'm taking this on top of the lip here and then I'm going to soften it. That's because this is going to, the light's going to go in there and then eventually what we put on the lip is going to give us a little pop. So it's going to be a lighter color or we're going to put a glossy gloss on or something with a sparkle, something that the light will just boom, bounce back at us. So having this darker is going to kind of make this pop more. Okay, now for my lips and kind of my preference, I am not going to continue this line much further than where I just put it just now. So I'm not going to take this under all the way to the corner. I am actually now going to take this contour color and I'm going to put it on top of my actual lip line when I get toward that outer third to the corner. Starting out here, that's when I did it. So you really got to soften, have a clean finger every time. Okay. Now the upper lip, I've experimented with this, with the upper, with the upper lip, and this is just where I landed that I think it looks best on me. And that is, I'm just going to kind of accent my actual lip line here. Hold on, I feel like I've lost some of my... Um, I brushed away some of my foundation there. But I am just going to do that there. But my real trouble area is right in here. So I do want to tuck it in when I get to the corner because if I don't, it almost makes that problem area look worse. 
So I'm going to take it on just a little tiny on top here and then I'm going to tuck it in and I'm going to take this and just like we did in the corner here, I'm going to draw it right on my lip line. So do you see what we did there? We bumped this up a little bit and that's all we're going to do. I'm going to soften. Honestly, if you soften every single thing you do after every single step you do throughout your entire look, your end result's always going to look soft and pretty. Okay, I'm actually going to get my hair on right now and we are going to finish the lips. Okay, continuing on, we've contoured the lips. I'm going to do something that I know you guys, again, might be a little sick of. It's very repetitive. And I was going to change it up because that's been a little bit of the theme so far in this look. But I am going to go ahead and do this. This has been my favorite. Well, one of three lipsticks is what I've been grabbing all summer long. And this is one of them. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Kim KW. So I'm not going to line my lips. I haven't been doing that lately either. I've just been contouring and then going in with the color that I'm choosing. I do recommend if you contour to go in with a sort of nude color because again, we don't want to bring attention to the actual lip line. We're trying to create an illusion. So I want to go in with something kind of soft and nude. So I did not take this all the way around my lips. So I didn't take it into the top corners or the bottom corners. And now I'm going to go in with the other thing I've been using a lot, which is this is a Charlotte Tilbury lip gloss. It's gorgeous. I have two in sort of that line. This one is called Venus. It's sparkly and it makes a beautiful topper. And I just dab it on the lower lip. Oh, so maybe a little more than dab. Mm. Oh, it's so pretty. And that is our look today. A special thank you to those of you that are still here. Let me know down below. It makes my day. I love coming across a comment that said I made it to the end, Jill. It really does make my day or my night or whenever I happen to be reading your guys' comments. So please let me know if you're watching to the very end. Thank you so much. No matter if you're a brand new subscriber or you've been with me since 2017, I want to send a big thank you and a hug to you. Thank you so much. And I always hope that you enjoy the time that you spend here. I'll see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye-bye.